Hot damn, look at the ass. Mm-hmm. Y'all in the mood for a 2000s rom-com? If so, then you gotta check the anime out that I'm about to give a review on, titled Ichigo 100%. This anime follows Junpei, who happens to be an aspiring movie director and his comical mishaps due to the many girls that enter his life. Yeah, harem-based ecchi rom-coms. Gotta love them. The story starts after Junpei has a fated encounter with a girl who happens to fall, exposing her strawberry panties. Junpei doesn't remember much about this encounter due to the cutie up and booking it, but he does remember that she was stunning and was wearing strawberry panties. Man, love at first sight. After this incident, Junpei stumbles across a notebook belonging to one of his plain Jane classmates, Aya, and learns that she's an aspiring writer. Since Junpei wants to be a director, he befriends Aya in the hopes of learning story writing, all the while staying on the lookout for that mysterious beauty that he had that fated encounter with. In fact, he's in such awe by this beauty that he thinks it's the most popular girl in school, Sukasa. And you know why? It's because who else would look that good? She also randomly tells Junpei when he's with the boys that she's wearing strawberry panties. So he be like, Tsukasa has to be this mysterious girl that I met on the rooftop. And because of this thought, he boldly decides to ask her out while doing chin-ups. Yeah, definitely outside the box. And to his surprise, she says yes, because how the hell could you not say yes to someone that's doing chin-ups asking you out for real. And thus starts Junpei's romantic and comical mishaps as he searches for the girl who's wearing strawberry panties. Now, for my thoughts on the story, animation, and music. At the time of this anime's release in the early 2000s, it had above average animation, and it had average music. Really, the music didn't, very, didn't really stand out. It was good enough to explain the scene, but didn't really stand out. It did, however, feature a really popular ending theme, K to K by Inoi Team, which was hot, cause it was like, well, they used the Banga Boys We Like to Party Beat, which you never can go wrong. But back to it, the animation and music for its time were above average and average. Honestly, this anime is not going to be one where you're going to remember it for the music and animation, except for its really catchy ending theme. The story, however, is a different matter. This is still one of the better harem-based rom-coms in anime to date. Legit. And the main reason why is because it has a progressive plot, character development, and no repetitive slash filler episodes. This is just a solid story. This is definitely a rom-com to check out for its story, not its animation or music. But definitely it's still a really good watch. I also feel that Ichigo 100% started a lot of the rom-com tropes, such as having the overuse of panchita, which are the panty shots. And with that, panty shots have always been around but I feel that they weren't used as often or more for that occasional like comical fan service rather than a running gag. Now Ichigo 100% panty shots are the running gag and honestly when it comes to edgy harem based anime I never really saw panty shots being used as often until Ichigo 100% aired. Nowadays panty shots are used over abundantly in edgy harem based rom-coms and I honestly feel that Ichigo 100% started that trend. Because like I said, I didn't see it before this anime aired. When it comes to the manga that this anime is based on, it was def a trend setter for the shonen demographic. Now, this manga was featured in Shonen Jump, and it was one of the first to really push that etchy limit for like a, you know, a tween teen type of male demographic, you know, like, this was one that was like, whoo, there's always been ecchi manga in Shonen Jump, but this was one that really pushed that like, like, whoa, that's ecchi. So the manga Ichigo 100% def was a trendsetter. And on that subject of manga, this anime was released at a time when anime adaptations didn't really follow the manga. Nowadays, most anime adaptations are pretty much chapter for chapter. And if the anime catches up to the manga, they stop, let the manga progress, then re-release the anime. But in the mid-90s to mid-2000s, they didn't do that. If an anime caught up to the manga, they would add filler to it or just flat out change the story. Some popular examples of this happening are works such as Full Metal Alchemist and Naruto, which we all know Naruto had pretty much all filler. This was probably due to the anime being released when the manga was still hot, so the anime would catch up to the manga and if the Japanese companies didn't want to lose the hype for the manga or the anime, 
they would have to add filler or change the story to end it when needed. The only reason I bring this up is Ichigo 100% is similar in that it's more of an adaptation of the manga than really an animated version of the manga, which may be a good thing because the anime's ecchi scale is much more tame than its manga counterpart. The drawback to this is that the manga has much more character development than the anime. And on that note, I definitely recommend reading the manga if you enjoyed this anime or you're just into ecchi harem based manga. Because honestly, I feel like this manga was a trendsetter when it comes to ecchi content for the shonen genre. I just don't feel like shonen manga, well, shonen manga has always had ecchi content. I just feel like every scene, almost every scene, having some type of ecchi content in it was really Ichigo 100%. And you know what? With all said, when I was younger, I really enjoyed the anime Ichigo 100%. Now, its animation and music are dated, but its story is still on point. And like I said before, it's still one of the better ecchi harem based anime out there, specifically when it comes to story and plot progression, which makes it worth watching if you're in the mood for a harem based rom-com that happens to have a plot. You also may want to check out this anime if you're just into high school rom-coms and are looking for a great flick from the early 2000s. Because like I said, the ecchi scale on this anime is really tame. Now, when you get to the OVAs, stuff gets more ecchi, but the anime, very tame. It's honestly the same ecchi scale as you'd see in any school-based rom-com that would air today. And on a side note, if you enjoyed the anime Waiting in the Summer and Rent a Girlfriend, then you def want to check out Ichigo 100% because they be like based off of this anime. Time for some info. The studio behind this work was Madhouse, and it's based on the manga of the same name by Mizuki Kawashita, published by Jump Comics and aired the spring 2005 season. The genres for this work are comedy, harem, ecchi, romance, and shonen, and it has a rating of PG-13. Like I said, it's pretty tame on the ecchi. And if you want any further information regarding Ichigo 100% or the other rom-com based anime that I mentioned in this video, then check the description. Also, have you seen or read Ichigo 100%? If so, then speak your mind in the comments and let me know which works you happen to be a fan of. And with all said, watch Otaku Time you know you want to, or you can just check out one of these other anime reviews. I'm just standing around waiting for you to click on something. But you know what? I'll see all of y'all next week.